My name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and for today's Everyday Office video, we're going to talk filtering pivot tables. Now, pivot tables can be filtered in several different areas in several different ways, and I'm going to demonstrate some techniques that are older, you know, for Excel 2003 and 2007, uh, some that are sort of middle of the road for 2010 and 13, and some that just came out in the most recent versions of Excel. So first we have to make our pivot table. If you'd like to work along with the same set of data that I am, uh, go ahead and click the link in the description below and go over to the blog and you'll be able to download this spreadsheet here. It's called Filtering Pivot Tables. And I'm just going to click somewhere on the data. And before I make this pivot table, let's take a look at the data and what I can do with it. Um, I have the tech support tickets assigned to different representatives, uh, categorized under different categories, assigned to different products, and that have different statuses. So what I think I might do is count up how many um, tickets are in different status levels. So how many tickets are open, how many tickets are waiting on our clients, how many tickets are waiting on people internally, etc. So I'll click somewhere on the data, use the insert tab up at the top of the screen, click on pivot table over on the far left hand side of the screen. If you want to see more about this, look at the earlier videos uh, in the same series. So click on pivot table here and uh, it has selected the table range effectively, all that data there and it's going to put it into a new blank worksheet. Again, I prefer to have the display of this data, the reporting on this data, be separate from the raw data itself. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Got my new blank pivot table here, and again, what I wanted to do was count up the number of tickets at each of the statuses. So I'm going to click the checkbox for status. Because it's text-based, it'll put that status into the rows field here. And then I can count any of these fields I like. I'll just go ahead and count the ticket ID number. I'll just grab ticket ID and put it into the values box. Because that's text base, it's going to go ahead and count them. And I'm just going to go up here and where it says count of ticket ID, I'll just put in here a number of tickets. So there are 72 tickets, 25 of them are open and the others have different status. Now, how can we filter this information? Well, the very first way that you can filter this information is by going to the little drop down arrow here on your row labels. And you'll see that each of the different row labels, open, under review, waiting on client, and waiting on internal, shows up on this drop down menu where I can decide to uncheck the check boxes. So if I didn't want to show any of the tickets that are waiting on the client, but rather all those that were open internally, under review internally or waiting on somebody internally. So these are the three levels that pertain to us as opposed to the client. I can simply uncheck the checkbox for waiting on client, click OK, and hide that type of ticket. Notice here that I've got the new subtotal. It doesn't say 72 tickets anymore. Now it says 46 tickets. Now I'll go back. Hit the little drop down menu, clear the filter by clicking the checkbox for select all right there, and click OK. Now, beyond the simple checkbox filtering, we can also do things along the lines of the value filters and the label filters. So, label filters, <clears throat> excuse me, are the labels over here on the left hand side, and value filters are for the data here in the middle. So, for instance, if I go under label filters here, I could say that, um, let's see here, the text contains, and then type the word waiting, right? So if the text contains the word waiting, whoops, waiting with no S at the end, there you go, then that's the only thing that I want to show. So therefore, open and under review should hide. I can click OK, and sure enough, there it goes. Click the little drop down menu here and clear the filter again, bring the data back. So besides that drop down menu and the filtering that can be done there, we have also the Excel 2003-2007 version of filtering, which is the filter field on the right hand side. Now I can put 
<clears throat> basically anything I want into this filters box. For instance, I could grab something like category, drag it into the filters box and let go. And I can also grab product, drag it into the filters box and let go. And you can see that by having those two fields in the filters field, I can click the drop down menu and say, show me everything that is related to licensing. Click OK. And then click on product and show me all the licensing that's related to brain clip. And click OK. And you can see there are no licensing tickets for brain clip. Let's look for something else. Now clear this filter. Go back to all. And there you have it. So I have nine tickets open uh, for, or excuse me, nine tickets of different statuses uh, that are under licensing. I can click the drop down menu here for licensing. And if I have Excel 2003 or 7, I have the ability to click the checkbox here for multiple items. And I can say both licensing and logins, and then click OK. And as you can see, it includes those multiple items, but up here it just says multiple items, which is kind of a clunky way of filtering. So I'm going to click the drop down menu here and go back to all, show all the records and click OK. So in Excel 2010, Microsoft gave us a more sophisticated way of filtering our pivot table. I'm going to drag these out of the filters box out of the filters box. And instead, for this pivot table, if I go to the Analyze tab at the top of the screen, and Analyze is for Excel 2016. If you've got um, 2010 or 13, you'll probably have an Options tab, I believe. And you'll notice on the Analyze tab, I have Insert Slicer. So again, if you've got Excel 2010, 13, or 16, you'll see the ability to insert a slicer. And a slicer is just a fancy name for a filter. So I click on Insert Slicer, and it asks me which fields I'd like to filter by. So again, I'll go to category and product, just like I did before, click those check boxes, and then click OK. And now what I get are these two panels that I can set up side by side here. And then, watch how nice and visual this is, right? If I click on account management, I see that it's filtered the results. If I click on login and credentials, I see that it's filtered the results. Product enhancement, it's filtered the results. But on top of that, I can also click on account management, hold down my control key, click on licensing, and then let go. And you can see I have those two entries being the source of my filtering. But I don't have that sort of dumb entry that just says multiple items on it. Now I actually see what I'm filtering by. And then I can go over here and I can click on Bedlam, hold down the control key, click on Cubics, hold down the control key, click on Vinyl. And now as you can see, these are all the account management and licensing tickets that are open for Bedlam, Cubics, or Vinyl. So being able to filter by our slicer is very nice. In addition to that, if you've got Excel 2013 or 16, you also have the ability, if you go back to that original pivot table, to go back to the Analyze tab at the top of the screen, and then Microsoft built this thing called Insert Timeline. So Excel 2010, they gave us the slicers, and then after that, they gave us the timeline. I'm just giving myself a little more space here. Okay, so back to the pivot table. Back to the Analyze tab. Again, it might be options for you if you've got an older version. You can click on Insert Timeline and say, yeah, the date initiated for the ticket is when I'm going to filter this on. Click OK. And then I can say that I'm interested in all tickets that were from, let's say, July through September. Let's go July through September of this year. There you go. How about here? How about here? There we go. Finally found some of them. Oh, here's 2016. Okay. So there you go. So there's uh, March through April of 2016, and those are the tickets that are open. Then I can click on licensing, and these are the seven tickets that we've got for licensing that were initiated in March through April of 2016. So you can see here that our... Uh, 
that our slicer filter and our timeline filter can both work on the pivot table and give us this really nice visual component to our filtering. Let's take it one step further. The real power here, the real benefit, is that often when we're working with pivot tables, one report will simply not be enough. So I'm going to take my filters over here, drop them right there, drop them right there, and I'm going to clear my filters. So I'll click the clear button here and click the clear button here. So these are all the tickets at different statuses. What if I also wanted to know all the tickets for different employees? Well, I could go back to my original data, click onto the original data here, go to insert up at the top of the screen and choose pivot table. And now what I'm going to do is instead of creating a pivot table on its own blank worksheet, I'm going to click on existing worksheet right over here on the left. And then for location, I'm going to go to the tab that it created for me for this pivot table here and just put it right next to the other pivot table. So I'm choosing existing worksheet, putting it uh, one cell away from the existing pivot table and click OK. And now I can say that the filter that I, excuse me, the um, pivot table that I want is based off who it's assigned to. I'll put that in the rows box. And again, we'll count up the tickets. Okay, so then I'll click here, double click on count of ticket and put in number of tickets. Good. And then let's go ahead and make a little extra space up here. That'll be good. All right, so I've got my filter let me make a little more space. Excellent. And uh, to take it a step further, just going to sort of lay these out in a way that uh, makes it a little bit visually appealing. Now here's the problem. I put in this slicer, this slicer, and up here, this timeline, before the other pivot table even existed. And if I click on, let's say, the timeline, for example, I can go to the Options tab at the top of the screen and see that there is a Report Connections button. Here's what you're going to find. There are two pivot tables, so I clicked on Report Connections. Now there are two pivot tables, but only one checkbox is checked. So I'll click the checkbox for the other one. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm connecting these slicers and timelines to the two pivot tables. So I click on a slicer, I go to options, choose report connections, and I connect it to the second pivot table. Click OK. Choose my slicer, choose the options tab, click on report connections, connect it to the other pivot table. Click OK. Now to take it one last step, I'm going to go up here to the top of the screen and minimize my ribbon, like so. And now look how pleasant this is from an interaction perspective. You're talking with one of your coworkers, you're talking with your boss about this data, and they ask you questions about, well, what about all the tickets in January? And so you click on January and you see the tickets that are still open from January. Or what about February through June? And so you choose that part of the timeline. And then they ask you, well, what about for only the product failures and then hold down the control key and click on other. So other issues and product failures. And we're only concerned about team fire, cubics, and bedlam. And so again, I can hold down the control key and filter it down to just the records that are relevant. So as you can see, there are several different filtering tools inside of an Excel pivot table. And if you have Excel 2013 or 16 like I do, you have a lot of different features to bring to bear on the situation.